Hello everybody, praise be to God and welcome to a brand new Let's Play by Colorful Artie, everyone's favorite 2D painting Let's Player. So today we're doing Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. So this is actually the second Kingdom Hearts game in this series. This was made for the Game Boy Advance, as you can see by the uh, lower resolution graphics. Now this one is much more different than any other Kingdom Hearts game, but I still think it's a really well done game. They did remake it for uh, PlayStation 3 and 4, I believe, but I actually do not like the remade version. They changed a lot of stuff, and I honestly don't think it's as well done. Just my personal opinion. That's why I'm playing the Game Boy Advance version. This also means because it's Game Boy Advance, there's going to be no voice talent, so I'm going to have to do voice all the characters by myself. Lovely. But... Basically, it's been over a year since I did my Kingdom Hearts 1 Let's Play, and that was a really, really long one, so I didn't really want to do another Kingdom Hearts game for a while. But it's been over a year now, and this is going to be a much shorter Let's Play than the other one. I'm planning on getting through roughly one world per video, so if that's the case, this shouldn't be nearly as long. Anyhow, I think you're going to figure out what the game's going to be like just by us playing it. So we're going to press Start, and we're going to hit New Game. So we got two different files to choose from. Uh, we're gonna do file one. Why not? So we recognize this. This was the ending cutscene from Kingdom Hearts One, and yes, this is a fully animated 3D cutscene on a Game Boy Advance. That's amazing. I don't care if it's low resolution. That the fact that the Game Boy Advance can do that is just phenomenal. So yeah, this game literally picks off, picks up right where Kingdom Hearts 1 left, which is nice. Now we did not see this part at the end. This is where we're delving into new territory. Sora, <laughs> abandoning his friends and walking alone on a dark, dimly lit path late at night all by himself. Th this is how horror movies get started. A ahead lies something you need. But to claim it, you must lose something dear. Ooh, creepy guy in a black cloak that teleported away. Last time that happened, our island got destroyed. Of course we're gonna follow him. Why not? <laughs> this is how plots happen. Oh, who's this? That is an interesting drawing you're doing. I like the use of color, though. This place looks ominous. Sure enough, Sora decided to follow the guy. Real brilliant, Sora. This is definitely not going to backfire in any way, shape, or form. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Alright, this is what the in-game graphics are going to look like. Looks like nobody's home! Oh great, I have to do my Donald Duck voice. Lovely. You sure we should just barge in like this? We have to if we're gonna find the cane! The cane? Cane Mickey's here? Maybe, maybe not. Something told me he'd be here, that's all. Really? But now that you mention it, I was thinking the same thing. Are you serious? So was I. One look at this castle and I just knew. They're here. Well, what do you know? Great minds think alike, I guess. Guess again. This can't be mere coincidence. Why, Jiminy, don't tell me that. I felt it too. Gorsh, maybe it's contagious. Or maybe something funny's going on. I think we should check it out. I am so sorry for my terrible Donald Duck voice. Okay. Hey, where are you going? To check it out. What's the matter? Scared? D don't be ridiculous. Come on, Goofy. Okay, but we should shut the door behind us. Sora! 
Oh, this creepy Black Hood guy who can teleport again. Who is that? It must be a Heartless! Let's see how it handles my magic! Thunder! This is the worst. <laughs> this is the worst! Huh? That's odd! Thunder! Thunder! Um, fire! Blazer? I don't get it! Why isn't my magic working? I should think it's obvious. The moment you set foot in this castle, you forgot every spell and ability you knew. Though the forgetting does not end there. In this place, to find is to lose, and to lose is to find. That is the way of fiends in Castle Oblivion. Castle Oblivion? Yes. Here you will meet people you know, people you miss. Look, there's no one... Riku! You mean Riku! He is here! Do you want to find him? If you do. <laughs> yes, or you can totally trust this guy. What did you do? I sampled your memories, and from them, I made this. This is the key to reuniting with those you hold dear. What is this? A card? A promise. Use that card and press on. You will find your friend. Hold the card before you. The door will open, and beyond it, a new world. Control pad, select a card. Sora has only one now, and then A button is confirm. So yeah, this game is basically, hey, remember all that stuff you did in Kingdom Hearts 1? Let's do it again! But the plot is actually different. So we're going back to Traverse Town. Like this? Yes, go Sora. To lose and claim anew, or to claim anew only to lose. That was really ominous. Also, if you are not familiar with Kingdom Hearts 1, you're probably going to be very confused. Come on, guys. Let's go. Wait, this can't be right! We're in Traverse Town! Um, yes, or you selected Traverse Town on the game menu. How can you be so surprised? And oh my gosh, Sora's actually not... That high res, it's only a few pixels, which is interesting. It isn't reality that you see. This town is an illusion conceived by your memories ingrained in that card. My memories? Forget about that, Sora! We're two heads short! Donald? Goofy? Guys, where are you? What did you do with them? They're at the mercy of the cards now. Master the cards and their strength will be yours again. Now we're entering the battle system. The laws of this castle require that your friends be transformed into cards. If you value your friends, you will pick them up without fail. So you see that Donald Duck card moving around? We can walk into it and pick it up. The cards you pick up are added to the top of your stack. Use them, and your friends will come to your aid. A button is use a card, so let's use the Donald card. Double flyer, nice. The cards you use vanish, but they will reappear to aid you time and again. Cards are the hearts of your friends. Everything in this castle is ruled by cards. Whether an enemy or a door stands in your way, cards are the only way to proceed. But you mustn't forget your own strength. So now we can jump with the B button, and we can tap the control pad left or right, and we'll do a dodge roll. First think for yourself. Move, then use the cards. So now we can use the cards on this guy. So this is how the battle system works. You have to play attack cards to actually attack. It's interesting, and it probably sounds really stupid, but it actually works really well. Good. Every move you make causes a card to disappear. If you use up all your cards, you will be unable to act.
But there is a solution. Keep using cards until you run out, and I will show you. And the numbers by the cards will... We'll get into that later. Right now it's just a very simple battle system. There. You have no more cards, and without them, no power. If you want that power back, you must focus. Bid the cards return to you, and they will. Reloading cards? Select the reload card icon and hold down the A buttons. This is the reload card icon, the big black one with the one on it. If we hold it down, it'll reload our deck. The strength of your heart brought back the lost cards. You can recall spent cards at any time. You need only wish it. But each time you do, the cards will take longer to return. The cards are by no means unlimited. Use them wisely. Anticipate the flow of battle and choose the most effective cards. You may use any card in your deck. So now we can use the L and R button to cycle through our cards. Which is very useful. The four card types you use in battle are grouped into two wider categories. The first category includes attack cards, magic cards, and item cards. The second category consists entirely of enemy cards. To use cards from a different category, so we can press select and it'll change from our regular category to our enemy category. We have no enemy cards at this time, so we don't have to worry about that. Cards will empower you whether you are attacking or defending, but it is up to you to decide when to attack and when to defend. Do not forget it. Are you two alright? Where have you been? You tell us! When you opened the door there was this weird light! Then the rest is a big blank. Well, I'll try to remember what happened. I need to keep my journal up to date. Hey, wait a second! Donald, where'd you get the new duds? You too, Goofy! Someone's been messing with our clothes! The cards again? That is for you to ponder. Actually, the designers of this game just wanted to reuse their assets from the last game, which is why they're dressed like that. Master the cards and make your way through the castle. From here on, you walk alone. You mean we can't go with him? That's not fair! Yeah, Sora can't do anything without our help! Thanks a lot, Donald! <laughs> you sure you'll be okay? Of course! I fought the hardest boss battle in the last game without you guys. You want me to go alone? Fine, I can take care of myself. Hmm, the hero speaks boldly. Go then, the rest of the castle oblivion awaits. Walk the avenues of Latin memory, and you shall meet someone dear to you. I have a really bad feeling about this. Jiminy's the only sensible one here. It's just like in the movie. <laughs> just listen to Jiminy Cricket, jeez. Relax, Jiminy! I'm up for any tricks he's got up his sleeve. How hard could it be to figure out these cards? All I have to do is use one in front of that door over there. You can perform the following actions in the field. We can move around with the control pad, we can swing the keyblade with the A button, and press the B button to jump. To open doors in the field, strike them with your keyblade. So that was a lot of information dumped right at us. Oh, and we obtained the key of beginnings. We'll get into that later. So this is the main overworld map. Or at least just the main map for each world. We can use our Keyblade and we can jump around. So what we want to do is hit this door. To proceed to the next room, you need a map card. Map cards are used to synthesize new unexplored rooms. First, select the map card you want to use. You can use the control pad to select a card, A to confirm, B to cancel. So right now we've got two cards here. We've got Moments Reprieve, and we've got the Key to Beginnings. The Key of Beginnings is a special map card, and we can only we need to use that to open a special room in the world. This is just a regular map card, and we're going to use that one. The number you see in the middle of the screen is the criterion for opening the door. The criterion displayed now means that the door will open with a value of 1 or greater. You need to pick a card that meets this criterion. Cards have marked values from 0 to 9. Zero cards, marked 0, are special cards which meet all criteria. The card without a marked value is a key card. Key cards are only used at special doors. 
Alright, so let's use our level 1 moment's reprieve, and that's just enough to open the door. And now the game actually starts. Welcome to Traverse Town. And for those of you who are like, what the heck, why is there a kid with spiky hair and Donald and Goofy are hanging out with him? Yeah, that's... That's just Kingdom Hearts. It's basically Final Fantasy mixed with Disney, mixed with some new stuff. The swirling crystal in front of Sora is called a save point. Stand near it and press the A button to open the save menu. I'm actually not going to save my game, just in case this recording doesn't work out. Aside from saving at a save point, you can also quick save anywhere in the field. Open the game menu by pressing start, choose quick save, and press the A button. Striking objects in the field with your keyblade yields various results. Try striking the barrel. So, yeah. But the quick save is literally a feature just like, oh yeah, the Game Boy Advance is portable, maybe we should let you save at any time, and yeah. We hit this. Ooh, it's a card! Kingdom Key, zero. Inanimate objects aren't the only things you can hit. Touching a Heartless on the field starts a battle, but you can strike the Heartless first to gain the upper hand. So the Heartless are basically the main enemies in the game. That's all you really need to know. So now the Heartless are stunned, and now the battle begins. You gotta beat them up, and you've got their HP up in the corner. Unlike in Kingdom Hearts 1, you have to pick up experience points dropped by enemies. Ouch. Thankfully, these guys are pretty easy. I'll go more into the advanced card battle mechanics later, and we got a Tranquil Darkness map card for that. So you have to beat enemies to get map cards, you also need to beat enemies to get experience. That's pretty much all we're going to talk about for now. We can also jump on some icons, and this dropped red orbs. These are Moogle points. These are basically the currency of the game. You'll want to pick those up. But yeah, Traverse Town. I like this new theme. And also, important to note, this game was actually the first Kingdom Hearts game I played, which is part of why I really like it. And I was super confused the first time I played it, but the battle system was so fun, I didn't mind. All right. So now we've got to get a card that's a value 2 or higher. Well, hey, thankfully, we got a Tranquil Darkness that was happened to be a level 2. So let's go for it. I'll go into what the map cards actually do to the rooms later. Or rather, as the game progresses. So now we're in a room where Heartless are spawning... ...more than in the last room. So we can climb up ladders. Boom! So you'll notice that the enemies can uh, also attack us. So for example, if we get close, yep, he just used a card that was valued 1. These enemies only have level 1 cards, basically, to use. And what the numbers near the cards mean is essentially how high its value is. Whoever has the higher value card is the one who actually gets to attack, because only one person can attack at once. So for example, if he's attacking, I can't attack unless I have a value card that's higher than it. And because I have a decent deck and he has a terrible deck, that's not too hard. Ooh, zero value, Tranquil Darkness. This is also Heartless, let's kill him. These are Blue Rhapsodies. They shoot Blizzard at us, which is not good. Ooh, we gotta level up. And a Teeming Darkness card, alright. So when you level up, you can actually choose what you want to level up. You can boost your HP, you can boost your CP, which increases the amount of card points you have, which allow you to equip more cards and better cards into your deck. We can also learn a new Slate. Right now, Slates aren't going to be very useful, so I want to boost Sora's card points. Card points is probably the best level up you can get. But it's important to level up your HP at least a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to get your butt kicked later in the game. That's a red uh, Nocturne. They shoot fire at you. Also, if we go for our deck, in addition to action cards, we've got this. This is Cure, which heals our HP. This is a potion. This does not heal our HP, but rather this is an item card, which means once we use it in battle, it'll disappear for the rest of the battle, but it'll be back in the next battle. It basically quickly reloads all our attack cards. And then this is Blizzard. This is magic, and magic in this game is actually pretty good. As you can see, it one-shotted the shadow. Pretty useful, that. And I have a Donald card. I don't really like using Donald in this, especially when these uh, musical enemies are around. Yeah, so he had the higher value card than me, so he was able to attack me. So these are ice enemies. If I shot them with Blizzard, then that'll actually heal them, which is not good. So yeah, I used the potion, and that quickly gave me my attack cards back without me having to manually reload the deck. And we get Meeting Ground. 
We'll learn more about the card battle system in you know, just a little bit. Yay, another level up. I like fighting every enemy I see in this game. Because that's the way you level up. Alright, now let's learn... Or let's boost our HP a bit. I won't get into slates until we've reached the tutorial on slates. Because honestly, they can probably explain it better than me. Moogle points, get back here! Oh man. Boxes. Oh, big Moogle points. Excellent. This is a trampoline. If we jump on it, it'll launch us upwards to a specific location. And it's important to examine it. Yep! We get another potion card. You can find cards, you can find Moogle points, you can also find HP orbs around this area. Also, if we hit select, this will bring up the map. So these crown squares are just normal squares we can go. These exclamation point squares are special rooms. So for example, our Key to Beginnings card is going to open one of those rooms. Alright, so now we need a card that's free or higher. And now I'll get into what map cards basically do. So you see I have a bunch of different kinds of map cards. These will make the rooms essentially into different rooms. So for example, Tranquil Darkness will make a small room with only a few Heartless in it. Teeming Darkness will make a large room with a lot of Heartless in it. Feeble Darkness is a small room with few Heartless, and the Heartless will have lower valued cards, which makes it easier to fight them. Then Meeting Ground, basically, it's like an average sized room where when you start a battle, you will always get a friend card at the start. Out of these, I'm gonna go with... I'll go with another Tranquil Darkness, because we have a free that matches it perfectly. And I did not get the first strike this time. But that's okay, because he's easy to beat anyways. Using the L and R buttons to cycle through your deck is a good idea. It allows you to be really strategic with what cards you use. Oh, that's Goofy. I'll show off what Goofy does. While Donald casts two random spells, Goofy barges forward and hits the enemy. It deals a pretty decent amount of damage. Ooh, level 9 meeting ground. That's good. Generally, the higher value the map card, the better, because higher value cards tend to be able to open a lot more doors. Blizzard against Blue Rhapsodies, so let's beat him up with my attack cards. Teaming Darkness. Good. Hit the Shadow with it, but not the Noct or the Rhapsodies. So as you can see, these are basically the same enemies from Kingdom Hearts 1, but different battle system. And the battle system's not as good as Kingdom Hearts 1's, but it's really unique, which I like. Alright, let's boost our CP some more. <laughs> At the beginning, CP isn't going to do a lot because you don't have very many cards to equip. But, trust me, it's going to be... Once you get a lot of cards, you're going to be like, Darn it, I really need to equip more cards. I can kill the Red Nocturne with the Blizzard spell, so I wanted to kill the First. Also, for some reason, you can't really fire magic while you're in the air. Take that. Oh, we get the Red Nocturne card! That is not a map card, that is rather an enemy card that we went over in the tutorial. So if we go to review decks, we can have up to three decks, but you can only have one equipped at once. So right now, this is my current deck. You can see my CP. I have. I currently am using 261 CP out of 325 that I can have. So we can go over here by pushing L, and we can remove any cards we don't want. I'm personally right now happy with my deck, but what I'm going to do is if you hit R, you can go over here, and as you can see, I have the Kingdom Key card that I picked up early in the game, I have the Potion card I picked up in the last room, then the Red Nocturne card, which I just equipped. That'll increase the strength of my fire abilities, which means when I use fire-based attacks, they'll deal more damage, if I have this card currently in use. Now... He's pretty inexpensive to equip, but I don't have any fire-based cards yet, so I can't really do that. And what the enemy cards basically do is, in battle, if you press select to switch to your enemy cards, you'll have, like, your deck full of enemy cards. If you use one, it'll basically give you a special ability, so in this case, boost off uh, your firepower. That'll be an ability, and it'll last for a certain amount of time, and once it's over, the ability will be gone, and you can't use it again until the next battle. So it'll keep getting recycled for each new battle, 
So it is, they are useful. They're also ran, they are also random drops. So the odds of you getting an enemy drop are fairly low. So I actually got really lucky that I got that that early in the game. Yep, these green orbs are HP orbs. That can be useful. Right here. Nice, Kingdom Key. Alright. This crown above the door means it's a special room. It leads to a special room. Alright, doors emboisoned with a crown are special doors. You need special cards called key cards to open these doors, but having just the key card isn't enough to open the door. You need the key card and one or more additional cards meeting certain criteria. Meet, pick map cards that meet the criteria and you can open the door. So right now we need a card of a value of at least one or more. I don't really like the Teeming Darkness card, so I'll use that. That will not affect the special room. And then we use the key to beginnings, and we will open the door. And this will give us to a basically a special cutscene that advances the plot of the world. Hmm, fighting alone isn't as easy as I thought. Ah! Don't pop out of nowhere like that! It's not our fault! We don't know what's going on, either! Gorsh, your fighting's gotten kinda rusty. You sure you don't need us? Hey, give me a break! I forgot everything I learned in the first game, literally. Isn't that convenient? <laughs> I'm fine, honest. Think like that, and you're as good as heartless fodder. Look who it is, everybody! Leon, it's you! What are you doing in Castle Oblivion? Castle Oblivion? What are you talking about? This is Travers Town. And how do you know my name? I've never seen any of you before in my life. Quit playing, Leon! We all fought the Heartless together! You know that! Look, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't even know your names. You don't? Sorry. This guy was a character in Kingdom Hearts 1, for those who don't know. I can't believe it. How could you have forgotten about us? Hey, I feel for you, but you've got the wrong guy. It happens all the time. Don't take it so personally, Sora. You do know his name! Now, now hold on. Why do I know your name? I think Leon's just kidding around? If he is, it's not very funny! Sora's really hurt! Who's kidding around, Goofy? You and Donald are the ones who... Hey! I don't get it. What's happened to my memory? I don't know, Leon. Maybe Aerith was onto something after all. Oh yeah, yeah this lady. She said she sensed some uncanny kind of power and asked us to look into it. Well, we look, and this is as uncanny as it gets. Maybe we should bring Sora and the others to Aerith. Yuffie, you know my name? Yep, looks like you know mine too. A friend of yours? Nope, total stranger, but I definitely know his name. Strange, yes, but convenient! We can skip the introductions. Well, that's one way to look at it. Well, gee, Yuffie, guess all our problems are solved. Anyways, I'm gonna run ahead and fill Aerith in. Leon, you give Sora and the others the grand tour. See you later! So this is a nice mix of fighting stuff and getting plot advancements. I like it. Well, let's get on with it. Come on, follow me. Be careful, though. There's still Heartless wandering around town. I'd better teach you how to protect yourself in battle. This is where we get... <laughs> this is where we get the full battle tutorial. See the numbers printed on your cards? They range from 0 to 9. Higher numbers mean stronger cards. If you and your enemy both play a card at the same time, the higher card wins. Go on, try it out. So we play a 4 and he's gonna play a 9, he's gonna win. Here. Yep. So we weren't able to attack him. And he was unable to block that time because we had a higher value card. See how it works? Playing a card higher than your opponents and breaking through their defenses is called a card break. 
Playing a lower card results in your attacks being deflected. Even powerful cards can be deflected if the enemy's card is higher. Whoever's on the losing side of a break is left wide open to attacks. Don't let that person be you. Cards with zero as their value are special. No matter what card the enemy plays, you can break it with a zero card. But you have to wait until after the enemy plays the card. If you play the zero card too soon, the enemy can break it with any card they play. In other words, it's the most powerful card if it comes last, and useless if it comes first. Try to make the most of it. Card values also affect the cost of assembling a deck. Keep that in mind. Now it's time to teach you how to stock cards. You don't have to use battle cards one at a time. You can also assemble free cards and use them all at once. This is called stocking cards. Stocking cards and using them in threes is much stronger than using cards individually. Go on, give it a try. Stock any free cards in your deck. Remember, you need free cards or it won't work. So if we press the L and R buttons at the same time, we'll stock a card and it goes up by our HP bar. So you can see that we have a 7, and then if we do it again, it'll be 7 and 6, so their total value is 13. Then we do it with a 5, total value is 18. The sum of your free stocked cards becomes the value you play. The value is usually high and hard to break, and the combo attack deals a lot of damage. Don't hold back, show me what you can do. So now after stocking free cards, if we press the L and R button simultaneously, we will use them all. So we just delivered a large combo to him. Combo attacks aren't the only benefit of stocking cards. Choose your cards carefully, and you can unleash special abilities called slates. Slates come in all varieties, and each has its own unique card combination. You should try it out once you've collected more cards and learned a slate or two. But keep one thing in mind. Every time you use a slate, you lose the first card you picked for the slate. You can't reload it. The lost card won't return until the end of the battle. Relying only on slates will cause your cards to run out. That means trouble. That also affects just stocking cards as well. Think you've got the hang of it, Sora? Yeah, more or less. I'll pick up the rest when I fight some real battles. Here, I found this lying around. You take it. Gee, thanks for the garbage, Leon. <laughs> Remember what I told you and make good use of it. We obtained Simba. So Leon just was like, I found this lion lying around. Here, you can have it. I sealed them in a card first, though. And we get the key to guidance. So once we get the key of beginnings, we get the key of guidance, which will unlock us the next special door in the world, which will advance the plot even more. And then there's a third key, which will basically end the world when we use it. All right, but now we have Simba. Okay, so red cards are attack cards, blue cards are magic or summon cards, green cards are item cards, and then these black cards are enemy cards. So let's equip Simba. And we still have more CP we can use, so... That'll cost 19 CP to equip, we can do that. That costs 17, that's a little too much. If you exceed your maximum CP, you won't be able to use the deck. Also, what you can do is... If you just go here, you can reorder the cards. So, for example, I want the zero card to come before all this stuff. I'll put the potion last. Yeah, that looks good. And the crate regrew and gave us yet another kingdom key, but it's a one-valued card, which stinks. Alright, level four card, level four card. Could use tranquil or teaming darkness. I'm gonna use feeble darkness. Because the enemies are apparently not weak enough. These are soldiers! You may remember them from Kingdom Hearts 1. They take quite a few more hits to bring down, but they also give five times the experience. Not quite five times. They drop one red pellet, which is worth five experience, as opposed to three blues, which are worth one each. Let's summon Simba, shall we? After we pick up the experience. Roar! He basically lightly damages and stuns people in front of him. Take that. Uh-oh, I'm gonna need more experience if I want to learn that slate. Teaming darkness. Actually, one thing I really want to try out 
Leon said only slates cost you the first card in your deck, so if we do the stock cards here, we should lose the first card in our... Yeah. So he said it only slates cost the first, first card, but no, if you stock cards at all, even if it doesn't create a slate, you lose that first card in yours that you used in the stock card combo until the end of battle. Well, that's not very nice. Ho ho! Three enemies with one combo. That's pretty cool. And that's all of them. Okay. Alrighty, let's use Team in Darkness again, followed by the key to guidance. Special room numero dos. Aerith, tell me you haven't forgotten me too. I don't know whether to say nice to meet you or good to see you again. It feels like a little of both. I don't think I know you, but I still feel like you belong here. Yeah, exactly! Like we've never met, but it still doesn't feel weird knowing your name. But I'm telling you, we have met! We took on the Heartless together! We were a team! I mean, she didn't really do a whole lot. Feels like you're right, but I can't remember. And I guess you won't remember what you told me. In Hollow Bastion, when I sealed the keyhole, we may never meet again, but we'll never forget each other. Oh yeah, that incredibly corny line. <laughs> See, you do remember! He's right, Leon. I remember you saying that too. I guess I can't write it off as a coincidence then. I don't think I have any memory of it, but somehow I still remember. Maybe Sora's heart is doing the remembering for us. Oh, oh this is the standard Kingdom Hearts cheesiness. How does that work? Thank you, Sora. We don't know you, Sora, but your heart is full of memories of us together. Those memories must resonate in our hearts, too. Maybe they tell us things we couldn't otherwise know. So you're saying that Sora's memories are affecting ours? That sounds really weird and incredibly convenient for the purposes of this story. His memories do seem to have a certain power. Maybe it's like that guy said, then. This town is just an illusion, something my memories created. And there's someone special to you in this town? Yes, I'm madly in love with that guy. <laughs> How did you... Ah, I get it. My memories are resonating with yours, telling you what happened. Anyways, yeah, a friend of mine is somewhere in this town. I mean, Castle Oblivion. Castle Oblivion? What's that? There aren't any castles in Traverse Town. It's not quite what I mean. Sora probably still has his own questions, right? Right. We just got here, after all. It wouldn't hurt to take a look around. Then go have a walk around town. They're heartless, but that's no problem for you. So you know I can fight! <laughs> I can't say I remember, but I am starting to believe. Oh, heck yeah. Did you see me? I've been... I've played for this game a few times, we on. Ooh, health. Yes, please. Whoop! Alright, I need some experience. So, Sleeping Darkness. This is a new card. This creates an incredibly tiny room with, like, three or four Heartless in it, and they're all sleeping, making it incredibly easy for you to just get the first strike. Uh, I could use that. Actually, yeah, I kind of have to use that, because <laughs> I need a high-valued card. <laughs> Yeah. Mooka points first. And you. Um, that is not the one I hit, but okay. And I killed them both with one blizzard. Alright, I want Simba to hit them both. Roar! <laughs> he found not even a cub Simba. Well, Leon found adult Simba just lying around. He's like, oh yeah, Sorkin at it. He likes cats. Alright, now we're gonna learn the new slate. Sliding dash. Slide toward distant targets for a closer range attack. You, uh, in order to perform sliding dash, you need to stock three attack cards of the same type, whose total value ranges from 10 to 15. Honestly, that slate really, really sticks. So, for example, let's do... 5, 4, 3. Yep, 
Soul Value's 12, that's in the range, so we go. So we basically slide into those guys, but it deals minimal damage, so it's not even very good. But it, you need to learn that slate if you want to learn the more advanced slates via leveling up. Also, when, every, every time you get a level up, you are able to uh, level up HP and CP, provided you haven't maxed them out yet. Slates, you can only occasionally level up. So basically, you can learn a slate, and then it might be four or five level ups before you can learn another one. Basically, once you reach a certain level, you unlock the ability to level up new slates. Alright. We need a green card. Any green card. Let's use this level 2 meeting ground. And then the Key of Truth. This is the last key card for the world. Hey, we remember this guy! Well, what do you know? It's Sora. Wait, what am I saying? I don't know you. But you do look like a Sora, what with the spiky hair and baggy pants. Guess I just call him like I see him. It's okay, Sid. That's my name. So you've heard of me? Well, I can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> Is that just because weird stuff's happening or because you're that arrogant? <laughs> anyway, maybe you can help me out. A friend of mine's supposed to be somewhere in this castle. Ugh, town. Your friend, huh? Lately all this town sees is heartless. Can't even take two steps without getting attacked. This plaza's the worst. Word is we'll have a jumbo-sized Heartless on our hands when that bell rings. If you value your hide, you'll get out of here while the getting's good. Why were you just hanging out here by yourself then? Gorsh, maybe he's right. Don't you want to see the Heartless? No, we don't! Too late. The bell! Sora, look out! Key of Truth usually triggers a boss fight. We remember this guy. It's the guard armor. So this is the first boss, the guard armor. He's pretty simple. He's got a bunch of moving pieces. He likes to spin them around. Ooh, some boss fights will have this special Mickey Mouse card, which is always a zero card if we use it. I think something will happen that'll make the boss easier to fight. So right here, makes him crumble, making him easier to hit. Roar! This is our potion. Ooh, we've got two Donald cards. If we stack two Donald cards together side by side, he'll use a leveled up version of his attack. So that was Blizzaga, and then Kira. Also, I love this music. So this is a really easy boss fight. You just wail away on him, basically. At this point in the game, you can literally just hack and slash your way through. You don't even need to worry about the cards or their values. So we got it. We want to get rid of his arms, basically, because you basically have. In order to lock onto his main body, you have to get rid of his upper parts. Ouch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna almost reload my deck, so it takes much less to actually reload it in the future. <laughs> so, <laughs> Simba just destroyed his arm by roaring at it. It's funny. Now I gotta wait for it to reload! Alright. I'm hoping for another goofy card soon. Well, now we can blizzard his face. Alright, level 2 Goofy will deal even more damage with his bash. Although that didn't seem to do a whole lot. I like how fire kind of locks on, though. And there we go, that's guard armor down. Really easy. He should be a pushover. The bosses in this are way easier than in Kingdom Hearts 1. And he also drops a lot of experience for us. And every time you beat a boss, you will get that boss card. It's not a random drop, you will always get it. So your friend wasn't here? No, I don't think I'll find him in this town. But he's somewhere in this castle, I just know it. 
castle? Like this whole town's inside some humongous castle? Who? That's rich. <laughs> He's probably right, Sid. We may not understand what's going on, but Sora does. He can see that reality is bigger than just this world. I wish I was that sure. You'll be okay, Sora. No matter what shape reality takes, you can handle it. I may not remember you, but I know you in my heart. This is so cheesy. Leon. Take care, Sora. I'm a little lost, but best of luck anyway. What's wrong? I don't have all the answers, but there's something I thought you should know. Your memories created this town, right? That's what the guy who gave me the card said. If that's true, then this town is just a figment of your mind, and so are we. But you can't be a figment! You're standing right here! The town is here too! But I'm not really me. I don't remember the things I should. I sense things I shouldn't. Sora, beware your memories. In the journey to come, you'll be faced with more illusions. Sometimes the shadows of your memory will deceive you, try to lead you astray. So, uh, what exactly does that mean? I'm just another illusion, Sora. The truth is out of my reach. Don't say stuff like that. It's depressing. No, Sora. You mustn't let illusions distract you from what's truly important. Okay. Sora! Jeez, my wheezy! Are you gonna stay here forever? <laughs> Are you ready to go? Yeah, be right there. Well, Aerith, I'd better be going. Oh, she just slipped away. Aerith? What about her? She's gone! I was just talking to her, and now she's gone! Aerith left with Leon and the others, remember? Huh? You were standing here by yourself. We wondered what was going on. Well, that's creepy. So this is what she meant. Oh boy, yep. That's odd. Moogle points! Moogle points, Moogle points, Moogle points. Also, if we look at the world map, there are still two rooms that we have not explored. So what this room is, this is the Room of Rewards. And we can't actually enter it until we get a special key card called the Key of Rewards. And that's a random drop that you find later on in the game. So there's no point in me even going down there unless I want more experience. But I'm not going to go down there to get more experience, because there's more experience to be found in the future worlds that we're going to do. And I'm definitely good enough to go through them. So this last room, there will always be like a really giant ladder that you have to climb. And a save point, but we don't need no stinking save point. Oh, it's Mr. Creeper again. Well, Sora, did you enjoy meeting your memories? It was good to see everyone again. But why show me an illusion? What do you want from me? That depends on what you have to give. Boo. What do you want? I got bored, what with you hogging the hero? Oh, this guy looks interesting. Perhaps you'd like to test him. Perhaps I would. Looks like it's my show now, Keyblade Master. My name is Axel. Committed to memory. No, you're supposed to say got it memorized. Um, sure. Good, you learn quick. So, Sora, now that we're on a first name basis. Don't go dying on me. Yep, another boss fight. Now we get to fight Axel, who actually uses slates against us, which is uh, interesting. <laughs> so he just used a call the wall of fire, but set it in the wrong direction. And if he calls a slate like that, just use a zero card. Also, ice does a lot of damage against him. 
Yeah, so we just use the zero card to break him. Hey, you like Simba? <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, not Simba! No! <laughs> Firewall's not even that powerful. I also love this music. This is called the 13th Struggle. And it gets remixed in a lot of games, but it actually sounds really unique in this one. Only one card left. It's not really worth it. Take this! Come on, take this! Uh, not quite enough for sliding dash, but that's okay. Oh, great. <laughs> a two and a one. That's like a that's a terrible slate power. Yeah, and he can teleport around, so that's fun. <laughs> ah! Simba! No! <laughs> and we get fire for him. Because we don't actually get his enemy card. Obtained world cards. Um, okay. He just left them behind, I guess. More cards? Hmm, they look kind of like the card that made Traverse Town. Then we need these to go on. Correct. Axel! After an introduction like that, you don't think I'd just give up the ghost. So you were just testing our strength. Didn't you hear them talking about this, Sora? Where were they mumbling at? Congratulations, Sora! You passed! You're ready to take on Castle Oblivion. Follow your memories. Trust what you remember, seek what you forget. And you will find someone very special. You mean Riku and the King? Well, I don't know. You'll just have to give some more thought to who's most important to you. Our most precious memories lie deep in our hearts, out of reach. But you can find yours, Sora. Where? How? The light within the darkness. You've lost sight of it, Sora. You've forgotten. Forgetting. Light? I don't understand. Would you like a hint? Well, Sora? No, I want to figure it out for myself. And if you get in my way... He won't! We won't let him! That's my kind of answer. Just what I'd expect from the Keyblade Master. But be forewarned. When your sleeping memories awaken, you may no longer be you. Now how cryptic. Gorsh, you think there are more where Axel and that other guy came from? If we face Axel again, you can leave him to me! No, Donald, you oftentimes, when I use you in a battle against Axel, you cast fire, which heals him. Moving to another floor erases all the rooms you've created. If you return to this floor later, you'll need to make new rooms using new map cards. Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. Something wrong, Jiminy? What Axel said's been bothering me. What could he have meant by you may no longer be you? Come on, how can I be anyone besides me? I know, I know. Still, it never... Oh, it always pays to be careful. That's true, Jiminy. Yeah, we could... Just about anything could happen here in Castle Oblivity. Uh, a blastomy. Oblivion! Right, what you said. We'll be fine. Whatever they're cooking up, together we can handle it. Hey, remember that other castle we explored together? With all the contraptions? No, I didn't watch Artie's last Let's Play of King Hearts 1. When was that? Contraptions? I don't remember any castle like that. What was it called? Gorsh. What was it again? Holla? Holler? It's Hollow Bastion, what you're talking about. I forget. Oh, for Pete's sake! You sure you didn't make it up? I don't think so. So now we're on the second floor of Castle Oblivion. This swirling sphere in front of Sora is called a warp point. You can freely move to and from the floors you've already completed. Stand near it and press the A button to open the world map menu. So we go here.
We're on floor two. We can also go back to floor one, which is Traverse Town. <laughs> we'll be here all week if we wait for Goofy to remember. <laughs> hero, hello, hero. Hmm, that's funny. Why can't I remember? All right, that's all the time we have for this episode. This is going to be this was a long episode, but the episode should get shorter from here on out because we had to go through all the tutorials and stuff. And all the worlds play more or less the same. You create the rooms, you fight the heartless, get the cutscenes, fight the boss, and then it's over. So this this is probably a longer than average episode, but next time we have five different worlds to choose from. So we'll be going to one of those, and it should be awesome. Thanks for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. I hope to see you then for the next video. Until we meet again. Have a great day, and God bless.